I will deal with the embryology of congenital anomalies of the gastrointestinal tract. I'm going to use um, clinical vignettes with um, multiple choice questions in order to use them as triggers for describing these congenital anomalies. Now this is another case. A 10 hour old baby is brought to the physician because of projectile vomiting we have now. Projectile vomiting after feeding. And on examination, there is a small knot which is palpated at the right costal margin. Which of the following disorders might be suspected? So um, here, um, we will not expect um, esophageal stenosis because this does not go with the uh, knot that is palpated in the right costal margin. Um, annular pancreas, as we will see in a moment, uh, there is bilus vomiting in most of the cases of annular pancreas. Hypertrophic pyloric stenosis is actually the condition that should be suspected here because of the projectile vomiting that is non bilus vomiting and because of the presence of the knot below the right costal margin. Extrahepatic biliary atresia will not present like this. It will present with jaundice. And duodenal atresia presents in many of the cases, it presents like annular pancreas with a projectile vomiting that is bilus vomiting. So the best choice here is hypertrophic pyloric stenosis. And this is to show you the x-ray of the uh, patient, hypertrophic pyloric stenosis. There is hypertrophy of the circular and uh, sometimes the longitudinal muscle of the pylorus of the stomach and in x-ray we see this uh, characteristic feature the single bubble appearance you can see here that there is a catheter that has been passed through the uh, esophagus into the um, um, into the stomach and some air is also pushed into the uh, stomach and this just shows the distension of the uh, stomach and the uh, bubble appearance single bubble appearance of the stomach. This is very characteristic and uh, together with the um, knot on the right costal margin is uh, characteristic for congenital pyloric stenosis. Now this congenital pyloric stenosis should be differentiated from another condition that is shown here in uh, this case. A baby born to a young woman whose pregnancy was complicated by polyhydraminias uh, was placed in Inten intensive care unit because of repeated vomiting containing bile. Uh, here polyhydraminias indicates that um, there is excessive uh, fluid in the um, amniotic cavity and this is uh, associated with uh, atresia of the esophagus. It's also associated with other anomalies that uh, result in um, obstruction. So this is to remind you uh, that patient with esophageal atresia might also present, the, the mother present with polyhydraminias and uh, also in this case where there is an obstruction somewhere else, not necessarily in the esophagus, uh, that will uh, obstruct the um, um, absorption of the amniotic fluid also results in polyhydraminias. Now this um, new baby uh, presented with repeated vomiting containing bile. The presence of bile in the vomitus means that the obstruction is distal to the major pancreatic papilla, so uh, the bile can pass into the gastrointestinal tract. The stomach was mildly distended and only a small amount of meconium had passed from the anus. So what is the most likely diagnosis? Esophageal stenosis? No, it will not present as this because here uh, we have uh, repeated vomiting. The child is uh, with, with that does not contain bile. Hiatal hernia, it will not present like this. Um, in in hiatal uh, hernia, there might be reflux, um, there might be vomiting, but it will not be containing bile. Hypertrophic pyloric stenosis, again, it will present with distension, with a knot, and there is no bile because the obstruction here is proximal to the site, to the, to the duodenum. It is proximal to the site where the bile duct opens into the duodenum. Extrahepatic biliary atresia presents with jaundice. And if there is biliary atresia, therefore there will be no bile reaching the duodenum. So it goes well, uh, these signs and symptoms goes well with duodenal atresia. 
duodenal atresia commonly affects the uh, distal part of the duodenum. Here, this is to show you the uh, atresias and stenosis in the GI tract. The tube will uh, pass into a solid form because of the rapid proliferation of uh, the tube, and then there will be a recanalization, and the tube will reform again. Failure of this process or abnormality in this process might result either in a stenosis where there is narrowing or it results in complete obstruction, atresia, and sometimes it results in um, duplication. Returning back to the duodenal atresia, this is the x-ray of the patient, and it is characterized by the double bubble sign. Uh, there is a bubble of the stomach, and this is the site of the pyloric sphincter, and then there is another bubble representing the proximal part of the duodenum, proximal to the site of the stenosis. The stenosis is affecting the duodenum, distal to the site of opening of the bile duct and so there is distension of the proximal part of the duodenum as well as the distension of the stomach. A knot is not present here and the double bubble appearance is very characteristic and you can easily differentiate it from the single bubble appearance which is here. This is characteristic of pyloric stenosis, congenital pyloric stenosis. In congenital pyloric stenosis again I repeat there is, there is vomiting, but there is, this is not bilis vomiting, and there is a knot that can be felt in the, uh, below the right costal margin. In duodenal atresia, uh, there is vomiting, projectile vomiting, there is no knot, and the vomitus contains bile. Now, this is um, another case. A four-year-old male child is admitted to the hospital with severe vomiting. Radiographic examination and history taking reveals that the boy suffers from annular pancreas. So this is another condition that not necessarily presents early, um, it might uh, uh, present late and sometimes um, it might be present in adults. So this is a case of annular pancreas, which of the following structures is most typically obstructed in, in this condition. This structure here, it's not the pylorus of the stomach, it's not the first part of the duodenum, uh, not the third part, not the jejunum, it is the second part of the duodenum. And uh, uh, this is to show you the normal development of the pancreas. The pancreas develops in a dorsal bud, as you can see here, uh, from the duodenum. And also there is a ventral bud that uh, arises from the bile duct, which develops in the ventral mesogastrium. The dorsal bud develops in the dorsal mesogastrium. And then normally there will be rotation um, with the rotation of the duodenum the ventral bud as well as the bile duct they rotate uh, in this direction and they will come to lie uh, in, uh, close to the dorsal bud and uh, the dorsal bud will uh, form the main part of the pancreas part of the head of the pancreas uh, as well and the ventral bud forms the remaining part of the head of the pancreas with the uh, uncinate process of the pancreas now uh, what happens in um, actually in annular pancreas, here we need some more details. The ventral pancreatic bud, in fact, consists of two components. And these two components, when there is rotation, they will rotate in opposite directions. So the right one rotates along its normal route, and the left one uh, rotates anteriorly and in an opposite direction. And this results in the formation of pancreatic tissue around the duodenum. Uh, resulting in narrowing of the duodenum. But here the narrowing is from outside, not from the inside, as in cases of uh, stenosis. So you can see here, this is the ring shape of pancreatic tissue that is surrounding the second part of the duodenum. And you can see that in the barium study. And also you can see it in the uh, operative photograph. This is an operative photograph of an annular pancreas in a 48-year-old man, and this is to show the uh, radiograph, there is narrowing of the duodenum, it is incomplete obstruction, see that there is some dye is passing to the distal part of the duodenum, and this is the site of the narrowing, while there is a proximal distension of the uh, duodenum, this is the site of the pylo pylorus, and here is the dye is in the stomach. So the presentation uh, depends on the uh, severity of the narrowing of the duodenum, 
and um, as we mentioned that uh, the infant uh, will uh, present with um, vomiting and the vomiting is usually a bilis vomiting um, more or less it is similar in its presentation to um, duodenal atresia this is another case pancreas divism and uh, here um, during development of the uh, pancreas the uh, ventral bud the duct the, vent, the, the ventral pancreatic duct actually it fuses with the um, distal part of the dorsal pancreatic bud and will form the major uh, or main pancreatic duct and the remaining part of the dorsal pancreatic duct will form either disappear or it will uh, open separately uh, into the duodenum as the minor duodenal papilla it is narrow actually if this fail to occur as um, failure of fusion of the ventral pancreatic duct with the dorsal pancreatic duct so the ventral pancreatic duct which uh, is large and drains the uh, uncinate process and the head of the pancreas uh, will uh, open separately it will not drain the rest of the pancreas but the rest of the main part of the pancreas will be drained through a narrow duct a minor uh, into the minor duodenal papilla and uh, the patient might present with pancreatitis this is another case a two month old baby with severe jaundice also has dark colored urine and white clay colored stool so this is uh, indicating that the jaundice is of the obstructive type which of the following disorders might be suspected duodenal atresia esophageal stenosis annular pancreas hypertrophic pyloric stenosis or extrahepatic biliary atresia in fact this is uh, a case that goes with extrahepatic biliary atresia um, resulting in obstructive jaundice because here the patient uh, doesn't have the vomiting and distension uh, that uh, or the choking and coughing that is associated with the, um, um, these types of uh, anomalies um, in, in A to D so uh, the presence of the of jaundice of the obstructive type uh, goes with extrahepatic biliary atresia this is another child with extrahepatic biliary atresia uh, showing that the uh, um, it's um, actually it is a progressive case and uh, the prognosis is bad if especially if the um, atresia is affecting the uh, proximal biliary passages so they cannot be corrected surgically but this kind of atresia can might be uh, corrected uh, surgically where it only affects the uh, distal part of the biliary uh, passages here uh, as you can see that the patient is going into liver failure um, there is um, ascites there is jaundice and there is distended veins another congenital anomaly the, actually the congenital anomalies affecting the gallbladder are multiple one of them is this one shown in this uh, ultrasound view it's a duplication of the gallbladder many of these congenital uh, anomalies uh, are asymptomatic and they may become clinically important uh, during pathological conditions